I am Francesco Sidi. Um, I work at the Blender Institute right now as a mm, developer and a production coordinator, mainly on Project Gooseberry. And uh, I'm here to tell you a little bit more about it. So, but before we start, um, I actually have um, a couple of questions. I actually lost my questions. Ah, here they are. So, just because it's the first time I'm here, so uh, I have, I, I'm not really familiar with the, with the environment and uh, the, the, the type of people that are here. So I just wanted to know, I mean, I'm pretty sure uh, everybody knows Blender because I've seen a couple of talks about it already. So everybody knows it, that's fine. Um, does everybody know about the open production, the open movie production uh, business that the Blender Institute uh, has been doing? Yeah, pretty much, that's pretty <coughs> obvious and uh, known. And um, I wanted also to know who knows about Project Gooseberry. That's, uh, well, that's awesome. Okay, good. Um, so, uh, thank you very much and uh, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, I will try to tell you something you don't know or maybe something that makes the project more interesting for you, something that maybe will motivate you even to support the project. I'm not here really to sell you the project, but at least to share with you why the project is important for us and why it should be important for everybody. Um, actually, yeah, the final question was like, has anyone pledged for Project Gooseberry? You guys are awesome. <laughs> okay, so um, it's, this is all about, it's not all about, but it's mostly about Blender, as you know. And uh, I've, I've talked about the Blender Institute already, so uh, everybody knows about this, the previous open movies. And what is important about this is the uh, production-driven um, development that has made Blender grow a lot. And uh, it has made Blender what it is now. And so this is why now, after making this type of production, we think it's the right moment to take it to the next level. So we are going really, we are scaling up the production size of a factor almost five, 10. So it's really an ambitious step because working on short film production is one thing, but working on a, a feature <laughs> film is something else. And this is where Project Gooseberry comes in. So Project Gooseberry, as you know, is an animated feature film and uh, we need to do it for several reasons, but the main one, as I said, are this production-driven development because the needs of uh, a film production, a feature film, a full-length uh, film production are different than the one from a short film production. So this is really pushing the software beyond its limit and uh, making it really do stuff that is not originally designed for or that it has not been used for before. There are a few uh, feature film projects being made with Blender right now in India, in Argentina, for example, and in Israel too. Um, but they are ongoing production, so nobody actually s successfully uh, finished uh, making a film, an animated film, uh, using a, a pure b Blender pipeline. And this is what we are going to do. This is what one of the things we are going to deliver, a software that is capable of handling this type of production. And uh, another reason why this should be done is to empower small studios to work together and take over big projects, bigger projects they could handle themselves. And this is actually interesting in the context of how uh, the movie making business is going worldwide. I mean, I, I think pretty much everyone has heard about the VFX protest a couple of years ago and there are other cases going on. And uh, it's, it, it's really clear that the future is not only having one giant studio with a thousand people in working there. I mean, that's uh, proven to work, but it has also proven to be quite expensive and tricky to handle. But it's more like having smaller units and have distributed production. So distributed production is kind of the future. And in order to do this in an efficient way, in a sane way, it's not just, you know, like individuals working themselves in their house and uh, uh, everybody's like, uh, remotely working, that's not the solution. The solution is having eight, 10, 
20 people maximum to work in a facility and collaborate with other groups of that size because that's when also like people themselves become really productive and there is a, a good environment to work and collaborate so this is what we are really focusing on with the project gooseberry and who is going to do this so it's a network of uh, 12 studios uh, as you see it's all over the world so from the US to Costa Rica, to Argentina, Australia, Indonesia, the Netherlands, France. So it's really spread. And the cool thing is that all these studios that are pretty much the size that I mentioned, like from five to 10 people, they are already using Blender. So they are uh, commercial studios doing commercial work, using the software every day, helping out with the development and uh, supporting the development of the software. So they are really willing to collaborate all together to make it work and move it on. So the size of the production itself is going to be roughly 80 people. And uh, we are talking about, uh, I don't know, 60, 70 uh, artists and like 10, 20 uh, software developers and TDs to work on the, on the project. So it's not just artists, but of course it's developers because that's how you make the software better. You need the collaboration of the two. Only developers can't make the, the, the software really work for a real world scenario. So this is the number and it's actually a pretty small number. I don't know if uh, any here, anyone here is like familiar with the film production or animation film production, like a little bit, but to give you, to give you just a, a figure uh, on an on a animated feature film of a commercial studio, you name it like Pixar, DreamWorks, Disney, Sony, whatever, we are talking about like thousands of people from eight to 800 to 1200 people to work on this. So we are doing it really independent, really low budget, really very little people, little amount of people. And uh, he is the director, Matteo Vre from France. Actually, I just noticed that the slides are cropped, but that's no matter. And um, so how are we going to do this? This is the core of the story. And uh, then I also would like to get some feedback and, and, and talk a little bit more about it. So we need clearly uh, um, to, to use the, simil the, the model we had in the past. Uh, we, we did crowdfunding for the, the previous open movie projects and it worked pretty okay. But uh, this is much bigger. This is much more complicated. We, and, and you know, like crowdfunding is, as the, the gentleman over there was saying, is not there anymore. Uh, it's, it, crowdfunding is kind of wearing off a little bit. So we, we need to find a new way to do this and to make it sustainable. So the way we thought of doing it is by making the Blender Cloud. And uh, you've heard about Project Gooseberry, but did you hear about Blender Cloud? Yes? Like, somebody didn't hear about it because the alarm went off. <laughs> so I am going to tell you about the Blender Cloud, which is something that is, that's, that's uh, the interesting part. So the Blender Cloud is a platform, is mainly a web platform for doing those three things, uh, sharing and learning uh, material regarding, of course, uh, 3D computer animation and so on, for uh, facilitating uh, collaborative production. So actually making the film, like the film that we want to make, and also for crowdfunding. And um, it's, a, it's a platform we built. This is actually one of the reasons why we didn't do the, uh, we didn't launch the Gooseberry crowdfunding on uh, Indiegogo, for example. We, we evaluated that possibility, but uh, it didn't, it didn't match our need because as you can see, like uh, our needs are, you know, we, ne we need to offer people a chance to follow the development. The standard crowdfunding method works that you pledge something and then you wait for the film to be done and then in the end you, you get maybe the film. But during all that period, you don't really, it's, it's a bit hard to interact and to, and to really be involved. So what we do is a, a subscription based system that allows you to, to give smaller amount of money, smaller donations, uh, all uh, during the project on a monthly basis and uh, see the project 
become reality before your eyes. And uh, that's the new revenue model. And this is, uh, I think, one of the first cases in uh, open source software development. I mean, there are sub subscription funds. Oh yeah, uh, there are, uh, <laughs> there are uh, um, you know, you can subscribe to, to, to funds. For example, Blender itself has a, a Blender development fund and you can, you can subscribe there. But this is related to the movie making. It's not only to the software itself. It's about the combination of the two. So in the end, you get the movie material too. You get the models, you get the assets, you get the script, you get the pipeline. Of course, this is not for everybody, but it's, you know, like, the, the market is actually quite big for people who work in multimedia, 3D, and animation. So this is actually an interesting offer that we make. And as I say there, you pay for the service, but you don't pay for the content because everything that is on the cloud is open content and is free software, everything. So the only reason why there is a subscription is because we need to keep the server running so because we need the people to work to make that content. But of course, the openness is one of the key points of this project, actually, because what the cloud is not. <laughs> Iron Curtain, like many uh, well-known uh, commercial software houses do nowadays, they, they offer you the cloud, and the cloud is very cool. But it's actually a way to lock your contents and to lock your software to keep that under control. So of course there are benefits because if the cloud works well, then your software works really well too and you have many advantages, but you don't forget that, I mean, your data does not really belong to you anymore. And it's also uh, not finished yet, the Blender cloud. We are actively working on it. And uh, as I say, there's uh, free software. If you go on the developer.blender.org portal, you can actually see the software itself, like the cloud software itself is free software. So you can have a look at it. And if you don't like this whole subscription based business and uh, if you don't like the idea of it, or if you have other ideas to what to do with the cloud, you can just get the software and run it yourself on your own server. So this is pretty much what the cloud is. And uh, this is how the cloud looks like. So I just took this screenshot a few moments ago. And as you can see, our crowdfunding campaign is still running. And uh, we launched it uh, uh, um, 25 days ago. It had a little bit of a slow start, but now it's picking up. And our targets are pretty ambitious. So for the Gooseberry project, we are aiming at getting 10,000 supporters and an initial budget of half a million euros. So these, are num these numbers are pretty big. And uh, I would like to spend a couple minutes talking about this, and then we are pretty much done, so we can, we can have a little Q&A. So why do we need that number? Like, what are these numbers? Because, you know, it's one of the hardest parts of this campaign was to communicate correctly what we are doing. Because, like, this cloud thing is new. How do you communicate this to supporters, to people? Or how, you know, how much money we, we need and how, how can we do it so that we, we don't go out with a crowdfunding campaign saying we actually need almost 2 million euros to make the film in crowdfunding money. We already have, or we can get, 4 millions, 3, 4 millions, and on top of that we need to add those 2 millions because making an animation film is actually quite expensive. So the budget we aim for is from 4 to 6 millions. You can't go out on Kickstarter saying, hey, we, we are making Blender better, please uh, give us six millions because this doesn't work. If you are like making Veronica Mars probably works, but not in our case, right? Not a chance. So how are we doing this? We are looking for these 10,000 supporters and the 10,000 supporters are the people who are going to subscribe to the cloud. So within the 18 months of the film production, they are going to pledge something that is around 200 uh, dollars. Now I'm thinking in dollars because we had to make the whole campaign in dollars because in the United States they didn't like the fact that we had euros. So <laughs> I'm still thinking in dollars. Um, so these people are actually those that during the production, at the end of the production, will have helped us to raise those 1.8 millions that we need from the crowdfunding. And uh, if you do the math, in fact, uh, 
you, 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 can, you can see here, the uh, initial subscription uh, cost for the cloud is 45 euros, which includes a three month uh, membership. So it's like 10 euros per month, the membership, plus a 15 euros activation. It's just to cover our costs and allowing the servers getting the bandwidth because what is in this cloud is a lot of data that people can get, videos and tutorials and stuff, and that costs just simply bandwidth to distribute. Um, so if you multiply those uh, 45 by 10,000, you get the 45,000 euros uh, of our initial goal plus the 50,000 that we can get with normal pledges. Because of course we understand that not everybody is interested in having a Blender cloud, you can still pledge. But with pledges only, we will not make it. We are really needing to get supporters, otherwise the project is not going to be done. And this is one of the hardest things we had to explain to supporters, because people still a little bit have this crowdfunding mentality where you just donate once and then you are done. But we are trying to make it different, so I hope I explained at least to you, and I hope it was a bit clear. And uh, just want to give you a quick glimpse of how the cloud actually looks like. You can log in, and then there is, at the moment, there is mainly a Blender training material. So as you can see, these are some products that the Blender Institute made uh, in the past years, the very good quality uh, 3D uh, trading products. And this is how it looks like. You can get assets and you can watch them and you can download them. It can be videos, it can be blend files, it can be anything. And the plan is when the Gooseberry project kicks in to put all the data as it's being made on the cloud. So you will get it <coughs> as it's being made. So this is the cool thing to involve backers like people who support us and you know people who like are interested in this context with the makers so this is our plan and uh, unfortunately there is no sound so it doesn't make sense to play this uh, trailer but i hope you have seen it and you can see it on the website oh i heard look at this look at this check this out check this out Hi, my, my, my name is Michelle. And I am a... Well, I am a... Everything is confused. I, I was. Well, I'm a, I might be. I'm a, I'm a sheep! And no, I want to go home. Thank you. Oh, sure. Yeah. So, questions? Are your credit card payment option was not activated yet? Is it still It is. It's available now. Oh. Yes. No problem. <laughs> it's now your chance. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know when you subscribed and when you've seen the... Ah, okay, yeah, but basically what happens is like we launched this in uh, South by Southwest. So we were in Austin and uh, we were at the trade show too. Like we had a booth with a TV showing the trailer, <laughs> talking to everybody. And at the same time we launched the, 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 the website and it was not really entirely finished. So if you... You, that page that I was showing, the one with the, with the little animal and the stats about uh, the campaign, they didn't exist then. Now if you go on that page, you see that the, all the training material is available, so we addressed it. It was incredibly useful, the amount of feedback we got from the community and from the supporters. We got such interesting and supportive reactions. It was really, really encouraging, and it helped us to make the campaign better, of course. So, yeah, but that's a, a point that it has been made, and it has been addressed, too. And it will be a very sad, sad day. <laughs> <laughs> um, so right now we are really aiming at meeting our target, which is very ambitious, we know. 
but uh, that's that's how we, we like to play it. We try to play it tough and really play it until the very last moment. And um, the deal we make with the supporters is if we don't make the, the goal, you can have your, your pledge back, or if you donated money, you can have your money back. And uh, depending on the numbers we manage to get, if we don't get the whole amount, then we can take we can take decisions on what to make and how to make. There is some flexibility, but we just try not to talk about it too much because if you, <laughs> if you, if you talk about too much, you know, like how things go. Thank you very much.